I'm Robert Torres. Hi, and I'm Patrick McCullough. And today we've got <laughs> water and dry ice, or solid CO2, <laughs> and safety goggles. I'm already blind, don't worry about it. How would you be looking into the camera? I know, it's a bad idea. Anyway, can you cut it up? You can bring yourself. You don't want to pour more than one. This is why we do it in the container. Sure. Okay, you win. You can always go get more water. Sick would have been if it was actual, like, yeah. boiling water. It would have been awesome. What are we doing? I don't know. <laughs> we can explain it later. <laughs> Zoom in, no, okay, Zoom in for the dry ice. Yeah, I'll get out of the way. We can not do it on my face. So made raisins. They're good for you. Dioxide. Here it's a solid, and as heat is added, it, the temperature basically stays the same until you get to the phase change. Here it's fusion because we didn't have a liquid form. So this is just simply the heat formation where these are the specific heats. These are supposed to be flat, by the way, because the temperature doesn't really change that, that much until you get to the phase change part. And then the specific heat for uh, carbon dioxide for carbon dioxide gas is so with uh, negative 395 kilojoules per mole as the as the, as the heat of formation we can we don't know the final temperature of the gas for the initial temperature of the solid but we can get a baseline minimum of how much energy was absorbed by the dry ice to become gas so we start with um, the uh, carbon dioxide which is roughly a pound convert that to grams, so that pounds would cancel, and then we take the grams, convert that to, mole, to moles through the molar mass, grams cancel, so we have that many moles we have, and then we use that to get the heat of formation, and then moles cancel, and we end up with 4,060 kilojoules as the minimum amount of energy required to or absorbed by the dry ice to become carbon dioxide gas.